Well, now we go from the farm back to the heart of the city. We've done a lot of stories about the new things that are going on downtown, but not tonight. Tonight we go to an old building that has not been turned into lofts. It's still doing what it was built to do. Factories have always been sort of special to me. I know that sounds funny, but my father worked in a factory on Laclede's Landing, as did his father, same factory, and his father before him. And though it's been a while, I put in some factory time myself. And though I admit I did not enjoy every minute of my factory career, I was always fascinated by all the noise and all the movement and just being in a place where you make stuff. The Tums factory is the last remaining major manufacturing plant in downtown St. Louis. It occupies an entire city block between Broadway and 4th Street in seven interconnected buildings. They've been turning out a variety of products there, including Tums, for over a hundred years. The first product, a laxative called Nature's Remedy, was manufactured by A.H. Lewis and his nephew Jim Howe. Tums came to the marketplace by way of a happy accident. Uh, Jim Howe was on a cruise with his wife, and uh, his wife had indigestion, so he made a concoction in his, in his laboratory. He was a pharmacist, and on the cruise he gave it to his wife and also passengers uh, on the cruise that also had uh, heartburn. And in two years later, in 1930, he introduced Tums as, as a commercially viable product. The company ran a contest to find a name, and a nurse from Jefferson Barracks came up with Tums. Tums for the tummy became the slogan that launched its success. In an age when service industries have largely replaced manufacturing, and millions of Americans have traded their places on assembly lines for cubicles and computer screens, a trip through a place like the Tums factory is reminiscent of an earlier day, of cams and gears and mechanical muscle, when the primary business of America was to make things. This is where Tums begins. We have bulk sugar and bulk calcium, which we get in these super sacks, and it's delivered up to the fifth floor. Because that's basically what Tums is, right? It's, it's sugar, calcium, and starch. From there, it's granulated, blended, put in a tablet form, and packaged in bottles or the old familiar Tums rolls. Last year this tableting hall produced 5.5 billion tablets of Tums. We have 27 tablet stations, each capable of producing 2,500 tablets per minute. Yes, he said 5.5 billion, as in B, Tums tablets. That's enough Tums stacked on top of each other to reach the moon. Someone figured that out. The beauty is in the process, how more than 200 men and women are able to make sure that whatever is needed is where it should be when. Ingredients arrive at tablet-making machines. Bottles and caps are air-blasted through tubes to machines where they are filled with exactly the right number of tablets. Robots stack and load. The machinery is massive as well as intricate. There's a rhythm here and a melody. Maybe we didn't think so much about factories when they were more common. Then they were just places to work. But as more of us spend our days in a solid state world of zeros and ones, where the end product is information, they're worth revisiting. As so many other American companies leave manufacturing to the rest of the world, 
The Tums factory remains where it started a century ago, in downtown St. Louis. Its products are tangible. You can see them and feel them and watch how they are made along the assembly line. Heck, you can eat them. So whether your next case of heartburn comes from a spicy meal or technological angst, you might consider Tums. <laughs>